Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> Sorry, Pat. I, I kept getting in there and wouldn't let me go. Okay, this is the uh, regular council meeting uh, to start on November the 10th for uh, Vernon Borough. Uh, we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Okay, Mr. Kenner, roll call. President McCarthy. Present. Dr. Carpenter. Present. Mr. Forbeck. Present. Ms. Loalbo. Present. Mr. Matlin. Present. Ms. Provenza. Present. Mr. Suchovich. Present. Mayor Cupero. Present. Mr. Alexander. Here. Mr. Pitch. Here. And I am also here. Okay. At this time, we'll, uh, Gary, you want to proceed? Well, we have, uh, you, let, you want to do registered comments and then we can jump into my stuff? Okay. Okay. We have registered comments. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Hold on. So we have, uh, hold on. Sorry. Uh, Trish is first. So I'm going to try something different. We're going to make her a panelist so that she can share her screen. Uh, Trish, there she is. Okay. Trish, you should be good and you can turn on your camera and share your screen if you'd like. Oh, wow. Okay, great. Okay, good evening, Council. This is Trish Redzak Showalter, 440 North Avenue, Chair of Verona Parks and Recreations Board. I'm here to present to you our Community Garden Proposal Part 2, the selection of our site. This is again a project of our Parks and Rec Board, specifically our Sea Green Committee. So you will recall at September's workshop meeting, uh, you graciously, unanimously voted to proceed with the Community Garden Project. Thank you, we are so excited. We have some good news. If you got my email, Verona has been conditionally accepted for the uh, Community Garden Pittsburgh Community Garden Program with Grow Pittsburgh for 2021 next year, which is very nice. It will coincide with our 150th, of course. Um, I also want to brag that out of eight applicants for 2021, Verona was only one of two selected. So it's a pretty big honor to have been selected for this. Now, the important part that I'm hoping to work out with you tonight is we need to select a site to take advantage of this opportunity. So again, um, we're conditionally accepted pending that we decide on a site and then we can move forward with the program. So tonight we'll revisit our top three site candidates, the pros and cons, and I've worked out for you some estimated costs should we pursue one of the two vacant lot options. So Railroad Park was one of our first sites that we proposed. Some of those reasons, some of the pros of this site is that it is highly visible, highly trafficked, um, fairly large area, about 25 by 40 was the dimensions of the area we measured out between the pavilion and the parking lot across from Miller's. It already has water and bathroom access and the cost to the borough would be free. We would not have to pay anything extra to get a garden on this site up and going. Some concerns that were raised include that it may alter the look and or the flow of the park. Some additional photos, including that marked out area for the garden. You may recall in September, I presented a list that Marcia provided to me of all the vacant lots in Verona. The highlighted lots are the ones that are at least three years delinquent on taxes. So from here, we narrowed it down now to the best two vacant lot sites for a total of three, including Railroad Park. So if we do pursue this option, I also included the application for the county's vacant lot acquisition program. So this is run entirely through the county. It's fairly straightforward. It does take nine to 12 months, however, to acquire, but essentially the cost breakdown comes down to this section four in the application. So we would be paying 100% of the appraised value of the lot, along with a parcel fee of $1,400 
for a municipality, and this may be waived entirely, but that fee would um, include everything up to uh, the closing cost, which will just be the last $500 here. So our second candidate, um, first for two vacant lots, you may recall is 851 Second Street. This is a fairly narrow rectangular lot on top of First Street, so it's very flat, very sunny. The dimensions are approximately 25 feet by 150 feet. When we went back to revisit this site with Road Pittsburgh, we noticed that there actually is quite a bit of fencing already in place. And as I mentioned previously, very supportive neighbors. The cost of this lot is only $600 to $800. Um, that will be reappraised by the county once we submit our application, but um, that is the estimate as of right now. Plus that $1,400 fee that again, may be waived entirely, plus the $500 in closing cost um, for a total max cost of $2,700. These are some additional photos of the lot, including the fencing on um, multiple sides that we noticed when we went through with Grove Pittsburgh last month. So the third site, the second of the two vacant lots is 246 West Railroad Avenue. The dimensions are approximately 50 by 115 feet. This is a larger lot. You'll notice it is, we believe, a double lot. There's also some fencing along one side. Um, the cons of this site is that it's either in a flood zone or very close to a flood zone, so that's something to take into consideration. Also, when we did the soil testing for this lot, um, one to two inches underneath the surface under the grass, we hit cement in um, nine different parts that we tried to sample from. So if we selected this site, it would have to be entirely raised beds. Uh, the cost is approximately $1,000 to $1,200 for the lot, plus that $1,400 municipality fee, which again may be entirely waived, plus $500 in closing costs for total max cost for this site of $3,100. And again, those um, property values are estimates. Some additional photos of this lot, you'll see the fencing along the side that is adjacent to the only neighbor. So next steps, um, tonight we are respectfully, respectfully requesting that council decide on a site. Um, again, tonight would, be, tonight would be lovely because if it's not the park, then we need to go ahead and get our application submitted to the county um, to ensure that we can take advantage of this opportunity being provided to us by Grow Pittsburgh for 2021. Um, just keep in mind that it will take nine to 12 months to acquire. So we're already hoping for the lower end of that. So at this time, I will take any questions. I have a question. Yes. Uh, does um, the community garden group have a preference of the of the two vacant lots? Not. I know the number one choice would be Railroad Park, but if that doesn't work out, do you have a preference between the other two? Um, both have pros and cons, and we do feel strongly that this is council's decision. Um, of course, if it was up to me, I would say, let's get both of them. We're already maintaining them. And especially considering those uh, fees might be waived entirely, we could get both for um, a pretty inexpensive price. Um, but if that was still too much cost-wise, um, I think at this point, the one on Second Street makes more sense because it's lower cost to the borough, as well as Grove Pittsburgh um, to get up and running because we don't have to do as many raised beds, so we don't have to put those in and then acquire soil every year. Thank you. Thank you. I had a question and it was mostly for Craig. Um, my understanding of the Allegheny County Vacant Property Program is you have to be the adjacent property in order to apply for it. it am I correct in that thinking, Craig? Typically, yes. My understanding is that you have to be uh, an adjacent property uh, owner uh, and there has to be a primary structure on that adjacent property. But I don't know if the rules are different when uh, a municipality is trying to acquire the, the property. Okay. Yes, um, the rules are different for municipalities for a project that benefits um, public good. And that's actually um, right on the application I included as well. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, great question. Um, hey Trish, this is Dave Matlin. Um, do you do you know where the uh, estimated appraised values came from? Yes, from from the county. Are you trying to find it on the website? Oh no, no I was just curious. Like you said, they did come from the county. 
Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, because, uh, I mean, that's good to know. I, I know that on the application or the literature on their website, there was something about um, the costs maybe being, you know, negotiable or reduced if it's a municipality purchasing the vacant property. So I, I'm assuming that in your, if someone talked to the county that um, they did understand that, that it would be the borough purchasing this. And so all of these, all of these values are, um, are based on that, correct? Yes, correct. If you look at this slide, the parcel fee mm -hmm. um, is actually 3000 typically for individuals. Mm -hmm. So the max for a municipality would be this 1400, but she said it would most likely be waived entirely. So that's the almost sliding fee, if you will. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, is that it? Does council have anything else? No, but I guess we, they're asking for us to make a decision, not that this would be the time to make that motion, but um, maybe we can discuss it more during the regular meeting. Should we get everybody's opinion on these lots and what we think would be the best decision? Is there any reason why we wouldn't want to just discuss it now, Nancy? No. No reason. I guess I'm fine with that. But this is supposed to be a business meeting, I thought. Maybe this is more for a workshop, but um Well, I, is it, I but, have one question. Uh Trish, when's the last possible date that um uh, you need this by? Great question, Pat. Um so it takes nine to 12 months. So um, the sooner we get it in, the better, because we're hoping that it comes in at the lower end of nine months. But if, you know, it's a window. So the sooner we get it in, the more likely we are to get it in time for a fall build, which a fall build would be um, August-ish. So. so voting on this at the workshop would not delay it that much? It would not delay it by more than two weeks, correct? Okay. All right. Um, the only reason why I'm saying that is not that I don't um, want to vote on it tonight, but I think we need to look at it a little bit more. And I think some people would like to look at it a little bit more um, and look into it to get a, the best one and um, then vote on it. Sure. But I did have a question. I mean, is it, are we just looking at these two or we, is the park still part of this? Yes, the park is an option. Right. So, yeah, I think there's a little bit more information that we have to. What to park is that? Yeah. Railroad. 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 Okay. I don't know if there was another. I don't know if there was another park you were talking about. Okay, I think we need to uh, to look into the, all three parcels and decide, and vote on it at the workshop. I mean, I, I think everybody has a good idea and understands what they need and but I I don't think everybody I don't think everybody's ready to vote on it at this point in time on which parcel they want. Well I for one am just saying that I <clears throat> feel comfortable voting on it tonight. Uh, this information was given to us back in <laughs> September for uh, so we would have lots of time to think about it. And I think they're really up against it right now, time-wise. I mean, it is two weeks, but uh, you know, it would be pushing it to get a fall planting, I think, by August, if we keep waiting. No, it has to be voted on at the workshop. That's the latest, is what I'm saying. It's two weeks. Okay, okay. I'm just saying personally, I don't need two more weeks. I don't know about everybody else. Well, I'm fine either way. I mean, I don't even, how would you even structure it? Uh, who's, who votes for this one, this one, or this one? I mean. Take yeah, I. Each one to see which one comes out ahead. Okay, you're gonna have, I mean, everybody may have, a different one and that's what I want a consensus of, of what we have and what we need to do 
I mean, I know what we need to do, but have a consensus of which we think, which place we want to vote on to, to move it forward quickly. Not this could take. Well, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is to summarize, Railroad Park would be free, but the sense that people were giving me that I heard from a couple of months ago was that people weren't really um, in favor of using the park for a community garden. So if that's still the case, I mean, um, I would be okay with the park and I'm okay with the reasons why people wouldn't want to use the park. So then there's only two properties left. Uh, the one on second is less expensive, it's smaller, and it doesn't have concrete under it. So I, I think it's kind of, to me, and it's their preference. So I would vote to have 851 Second Street be the place for the community garden. Trish, I have a question. Is that entire lot on West Railroad Avenue concrete? Yes, Sylvia, it appears to be. We did nine spots throughout the lot and hit concrete every time about one to two inches underneath, which like I said, we can do all raised gardens. It's just an added um, portion of our expense that we'll have to go just to building the beds and probably soil every year. And for your information, it is in a floodplain. It's, it is considered a floodplain. There's always grants too, Trish, you know? Maybe we could even get help that way. I mean, I mean, there's other things you have to weigh. I, I mean, I'd probably more lean towards the park because here's property that could go in the tax base possibly too. So I mean, I'm all for, I'm all for having a, a community garden. Absolutely. It's just there's. I think we need to discuss this. And well, I could go for railroad park as well. <laughs> okay, let's let's table this to vote on it at the workshop and discuss it. Or, come up let me ask question. a question. Was, there, was any of the neighbors at all talked to about any of this? Actually, yeah. Ray, yes. I distributed about 50 flyers to all the houses that were near both of these properties. And we got enthusiastic support um, primarily from Second. We didn't hear back from the West Railroad as, as much, but actually Sylvia did reach out to the owner of the Sylvan Bar directly across the way. And I believe that she was very enthusiastic. Mrs. Z, Mrs. Z should probably would be enthusiastic. Okay, well, thank you. Um, I am certainly available uh, tonight uh, within the next two weeks and I'll be at workshop if anyone has questions, um, let us know. Um, I am curious just where everyone's standing. I know um, a couple of people threw out their selections. If, if you don't mind just kind of saying where you're leading, I understand we're not gonna discuss, but just, just so I, so I know how we're leaning. I'm leaning for Second Street. I'm leaning for Second Street as well. I'd be willing to make a motion for Second Street. I can only Second. give an I can only give an opinion, but I think Second Street would make an ideal spot. I'm in agreement there too. Well, if everybody's in Let's agreement. Take a vote then. <laughs> everybody's in agreement um, for Second Street. Take the vote. All right, I'll make a make motion. A motion. I'll make a motion that we acquire Second Street lot uh, as described by uh, Trish uh, for a community garden and that the borough would be paying for this acquisition. I have a motion on the floor to acquire uh, 851 Second Street for the community garden. Is there a second? A second. Second by Ms. Lealbo. Question. All, all those in favor say aye. Question. Oh, question. Go ahead. Are there any questions? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I do. Mr. Alexander, is there anything we need to do as a borough before we vote on this and do this? No. No? Is, should should the borough put any sort of limit? Because we don't we don't know what the new appraised value is, correct? I mean, that could come back at much higher. Do we need to put some sort of limit on the appraised value that we can possibly pay? You can always choose not to do it down the road. I mean, you can do that if you want to do that. Yeah, okay, so we no, don't. No fee to change your mind. Okay, that's all. I just don't want to make a motion and then it comes back at ten thousand dollars and we have to come up with that or whatever, you know. Right. So okay. Okay. Good question. Any other questions? Could oh. yeah. I mean, 
I get what uh, Craig and Jerry just said. Could we just could we just agree maybe that if the cost comes back higher than what's estimated, that maybe we we just do a double check. Or how, if it's, how, or how, how if about it's this? lower, we can get both. How about this? We put a limit of three thousand dollars on it. I I think that's that sounds reasonable. That's fair. Okay. Okay. Then that way. We're not, you know, dilly dallying around and coming back and forth and trying to figure out. So we put a limit of three thousand dollars on it. So I'll amend my motion to the borough acquiring eight fifty one Second Street uh, with a limit of spending three thousand dollars for all the okay. fees. Okay. Uh, amendments so noted. Is uh, is there a second for the uh, amendment? I'll second. I'll make the second. Pat. Second by Mr. Suchovich. Are there any more questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any no's? No no's, motion passed. Thank you so much, Council. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Trish. Thanks for all you do, Trish. Thanks, yes. Trish. Thank you. Thanks, Trish. Thanks, Trish. We're gonna make you proud. <laughs> Appreciate that. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Kenna. Hold on, I gotta make See Trish ya, an Trish. attendee again. See you, Trish. <laughs> okay. All right. So, next on the agenda, let me open it back up here. All right. Uh, Christine McBride from North Avenue. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hi, Chris. Hi. So um, I just wanted a little bit of clarity on some of the, the forms in the building and zoning. We have the zoning variance application and the zoning hearing board application. And for <coughs> people who aren't involved in this process, I'm not sure how these processes work. And I was wondering if it'd be possible to have a breakdown and a, you know a, another voice put, put under the building and zoning um, permit application to explain how the process works, the timeline, and and who reviews this paperwork that way there's an abs you know there's no way there's not clarity and i think it would really make communication so much easier so we could understand you know how these things work um and my second question is that i i was listening last time to our meeting and we mentioned that we print information in the penny saver when we make it public knowledge. Um, unfortunately, Verona doesn't receive the paper copy of the penny saver any longer. And their search engine is antiquated on their website. So if we go to penny saver and Google Verona, nothing comes up. So would it be possible to, to print information in our local newspaper? So that goes directly to everybody in the neighborhood so we all know what's going on? And that way everyone's informed and, and we've met our requirements. Thank you. Thank you. Can we address that real quick? We don't advertise in the penny saver. I think all of our advertisements done in the trip. Craig Valley News Dispatch and now the Post Gazette. So if, if, if I could, may, uh, Go ahead, Craig. And if I may uh, address some of that. Uh, the municipality's planning code is the code book that uh, the zoning falls under. And once the application is submitted, it's the zoning officer that would review the application and make sure everything's in order. And the zoning officer is Mark Stanton. And uh, from the date the application is received, it's my understanding that a hearing must be scheduled within 60 days. And <clears throat> once the first hearing is scheduled, they can, you can have more than one hearing. 
but the but, but the first hearing must be uh, scheduled within 60 days and then uh, following the final hearing the decision has to be reached issued I believe within 45 days and then the person has 30 days to file an appeal to the Court of Common Pleas. Any aggrieved party has the, the, the ability to, to appeal to the Court of Common Pleas of Allegheny County. Uh, I don't know if that answers uh, Chris's questions or not, but that's the process for filing a zoning application and um, and having it get on get get on a hearing agenda before the zoning hearing board. And if I can add to that as well, the physical address has to be posted with a sign. And if I remember correctly, Craig, it, it's anything within 200 feet has well, to that, receive that, that, mail. That depends, yeah, that depends on what the, the municipality's planning code doesn't require that. Uh, Cheswick's ordinance does require that. It's 300 feet. Uh, Harmer's ordinance requires adjacent property owners. Uh, it, it would depend on what our what our local zoning ordinance requires for, for, for notice, but it certainly has to be posted. And it has to be published in a news per, newspaper of general circulation. And, and there's some there's some argument or discussion over whether the Valley News Dispatch constitutes a newspaper of general circulation. So uh, we're we're starting to post uh, publish things in the Post Gazette as well because uh, it it clearly is. But it's only published for lim for a limited period where the Valley's published every day. Um, public notice under the Sunshine Law for purposes of a public hearing is once each week for two successive weeks. Uh, no earlier than <clears throat> no no earlier than let me rephrase it. At least thirty days, but not less than seven days before the hearing. So you have to publish it in week one any day of the week, and then in week two, any day of the week. It doesn't need to be seven days apart, as long as it's published in one week and then in the next week, with the final ad being at least seven days before the meeting, you meet the public notice provision under the Sunshine Law and the, and the uh, zoning code. So that's a little extra. And hopefully, did that get to what Chris was talking about? I believe so. Yeah, so I think what she's referring to about the penny saver is I, if we publish in the Valley News Dispatch or the Trib or whatever, um, it those ads actually show up on the Pittsburgh Penny Saver website. Well, it's they just, might that, that might be true, yeah. but it's also published in their legal section of the newspaper on the date we tell them to publish it. Yeah, so I think um, on on whatever date it's you tell them to publish it, um, it'll show up maybe mm. for you know a certain number of days <laughs> on that if you search the, the Pittsburgh Penny Saver website. So I think that's what, maybe what she was referring to um, right. there. Yeah, we, but, we did not publish in the, pub, in the Penny Saver, but uh, I've heard that in, in Penn Hills that it appears in their local Penny Saver paper as well. Mm -hmm. But not, not everybody even in Penn Hills gets a Penny Saver. Uh, the people in Verona that with the Verona zip code do not. Yeah, I, I think it must be because they are part of or have an agreement with uh, TRIB or that that media group so that makes sense okay let's move on okay so next is Rhea Homa I'm gonna find it. here we go <coughs> go ahead Rhea hello council uh, Rhea Homa 742 Brunot Street um, first of all I'm really excited about the vote and decision in choosing a lot for the community garden thank you so much for that um, my purpose for commenting this evening, though, is I wanted to share information that the Pennsylvania Resource Council is collecting election signs um, for recycling now until December 4th. Uh, it's a Pittsburgh-wide program, but we could easily get uh, set up for location, set up a location for a drop-off here in Verona. Um, I personally volunteer to manage collection every other day. Uh, until December 3rd, and then I'll drop off collections off at one of the city locations. Um, it would be an arrangement very similar to when we collected bags for treks, which I think worked pretty smoothly. 
Um, once, con once collected, I can weigh the materials to include in the 904 uh, recycling grants if this is applicable as well. I've shared an infograph and a link to PRC's program to the council members and to Jerry. And as soon as we get a hopeful green light, um, we can start sharing information along to the rest of the community. If anyone else is interested in more information, the page is pittsburghpa.gov slash dpw slash yard hyphen sign hyphen recycling. Uh, thank you for your consideration. Thank you. I hope you get as many signs in your basement as you did plastic bags. Oh my gosh. Listen, <laughs> uh, tomorrow Josh will be turning in the last of, I, I don't know what to call it, the last He might haul. divorce you after this. <laughs> <laughs> he's into it too, it's good. Well, tomorrow he's going to be turning in the last of the second 500 pounds. So mm -hmm. tomorrow we'll be turning in enough to get our second bench. And then there's still an additional 500 pounds that have not yet been processed in our basement. So wow. I'm still living with that decision from earlier. <laughs> That's all added into our 904, don't forget, Jerry. I think it's a great idea. We, can we make this available in a, like we did the other arrangements? Either in the borough building or something like that? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Put the, have collection in the vestibule? Yeah. Like we did the other stuff? Yeah, I think it would be fun. great. Yeah, I think we yeah. need um, once, once you get bigger. Once it gives us the okay, we can do it. Okay, I'd yeah. offer the fire hall, but there's nobody there every day, so I can't expect people to be there. The vestibule is always open, so it's no big deal. True, true. You okay. be picking them every day, you said, or every other day? I plan to pick up every other day. Okay, fine. Right. Um. I am all for the vestibule. That would be my location of choice. Um, my only concern is that we don't necessarily have a box. So I think it's okay if every if they're just propped up against a wall. I just wanted to make sure the council was aware that I don't have a specific box to collect them in. That's okay. I think it'd be okay. Especially if you're picking up every other day. Yeah, I don't think it'll get too out of hand. Yay. All right. Right. Is that is that a green light then or yes? Yes. So do you need a motion from council? I I yeah. If that would if that's preferable, please. I'll make the motion that we collect the signs uh, and be I'll available to collect the signs. I'll second. All right. There's a motion on the floor to to uh, collect the signs by Mike Forback, second by uh, Ray Sachovich. Is there are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any noes? No, no, it's motion passed. Thanks, Raya. Thank you very much. That's Thanks, wonderful. Raya. Thank you, Council. Thanks, Raya. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so okay. that's it for registered comments. I don't know if you want to go to public comment or if you want to do that at the end. No, we'll we do that to. at the end. Okay, then I'll roll right into my stuff. Uh, first thing on the agenda would be the meeting minutes. They were distributed from the uh, October workshop, and uh, we would need a motion to approve the minutes for the October workshop. I'll make a motion, Jerry. The motion was made by Mr. Provenza. It was second by. I'll make it. Um, Mr. Suchovich, uh, to accept the minutes. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any noes? No noes. Motion passed. <clears throat> okay. Uh, last week, I sent out the financial reports for October, uh, included in which was the checklist and budget bills payable. We need a motion to pay the bills. I'll make motion that pay motion. The bill. Mr. Suchovich made the motion to pay the bills. Need a second. Second by Mr. Forback. Are, are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 No, are there any no's? No no's. Motion passed. Next is the uh, taxes and special tax report. Uh, for the month of October, we received $1,349.88 in current year real estate taxes, $2,101.95 in delinquent real estate taxes, $1,760.20 in real estate transfer taxes, $8,372.05 in earned income taxes for the current year. $6,456.59 
for local service taxes for the current year. Need a motion to approve that. I'll Need make that motion. To, to pay the tax collector, special tax made by Mr. Suchovich. I need a second. A second. Second question. by Dr. Carpenter. Are there any questions? I have one question. Jerry, there's been a yes, talk sir. every meeting about earned income yeah. tax. How we, do you have any, any numbers for that? We're down. Um, we are right now about 70, uh, bu 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 $79,000 short of what we finished with last year. Um, I don't expect that we will come close to that. I think we're probably going to end up about 60,000 short uh, throughout the next two months. Um, our real estate taxes, as you can see, the last three months have been very, very low, which is typical. Um, they definitely fall off this time of year because most people are already paid up. Um, I would expect that we'll have another little jump in real estate tax in November, December, because of the fact that people had until the end of the year. So I think we'll probably have some some late people come in, um, but we are overall, we're probably going to end up finishing the year about $60,000 short um, on real estate or on taxes collected. How's that going to affect um, us on our, on our budget for last year? I think we're going to be, um, we're going to be close. We're under budget on a handful of uh, items. Um, you know, we had a hard time getting police officers this year. So we've got a lot of budgeted for, for police that we're not going to end up using, um, as everybody knows, starting to get better. We've got some new people coming on, but um, uh, I think we're going to be okay. We're still going to end up finishing up the year with money in the account. We're I'm comfortable with our our balances at the moment uh, to go into next year, but we definitely had um, a, a, a reduction in earned income taxes for 2020 because of COVID. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I the one question. thing, the one thing that will help with that is that that CARES Act funding. We're expecting that we'll probably get around sixty thousand dollars for that CARES Act funding. So, um, well, that's what I was hoping that, you would bring up. If that comes in by the end of the year, we should kind of be even, um, which will be good. Uh, I don't know if it's going to come in before December. I don't really know how it's going to work yeah. out, but um, if it does, then we should be in really good shape. Okay, Thanks, that was my question. That was going to be my question. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Motion passed. All right, so for October's treasurer's report, we began the month with $329,268.73. We received $70,232.08 in general fund deposits. We had expenditures of $191,404.80 for an ending balance of $208,096.01. Need a motion to approve the treasurer's report. Need a I'll make motion, a motion for the treasurer's report. I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Suchovich. I need a second. <clears throat> second, second by Ms. Lalba. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's, motion passed. Police chief's report. I'm sorry, Jerry. So I figure I'm gonna come back to do the budget, but we'll do that after police fire and EMS. Okay. No. I'm going to be long-winded, so we might as well get the rest of them done first. Okay. Chief. Chief, you're muted, buddy. <clears throat> I was, on a, I was on a roll too. It was really good and muted. <laughs> <laughs> this is for uh, October. We received 209 complaints. Uh, we had 27 crimes reported, 20 cleared, uh, 17 arrests. Crimes, crimes code summaries issued were two. Vehicle code summaries issued was 84. We had 32 uh, borough parking summaries issued and 93 um, parking tickets issued. Our uh, magistrate's fines collected was $1,020. Our borough fines and fees collected was $575. We had $30 purchase, uh, police reports purchased. 
municipal fines were two dollars and sixty seven cents or total fines and fees was one thousand six hundred twenty seven dollars and sixty seven cents another one hundred twenty dollars in uh, parking permit fees. That's all about okay. all I have for tonight. Okay, I need a motion for to accept the police chief's report. I make that motion. Motion by Mr. Sutter. It's, I'll second the motion. Okay. Are there any questions? Hey, I have a quick question for uh, for Chief. Um, Go ahead. Uh, Chief, you probably you're probably aware there was there was a bunch of uh, car thefts up on the hilltop recently, and I don't know if you. Uh, have you have you seen that continue or uh, anything lately? We haven't had anything since the last report a couple of weeks ago. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, there's a lot of communities getting hit by the same group. It's it's uh, not just Verona, but uh, needless to say, it, it did happen here. Yeah, yeah, I heard about it on the hilltop. One of my neighbors behind me had it, um, and then up in Penn Hills too. And it seems like it tends to happen in the fall for whatever reason, but. I was just curious if you'd seen it continue. That's all. No. Oh, what I gather, it's, it's people that are leaving their vehicles open too, mostly. There's not a lot of break-ins. They're just pulling on doors and. Yeah. From what I'm hearing, anyway. Yeah, that's that's what uh, that's what I've heard as well, Ray. I, I don't think uh, I think it's just you know remember to lock your car, or try not to fudge it in your pocket or something. So. I can tell you that there was a I got a ring doorbell notification. Uh, that there were some kids in, in Oakmont doing the same thing on 10th Street. So they're hit, hitting here too. No. Any other questions? Hopefully they don't come on near, near some houses. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Motion passed. Fire Chief's report. We had uh, uh, nine fire calls in the month of uh, October. Um, last month I reported we had the trucks uh, pump tested and uh, our treasurer paid the bill. So you got Scott clear this year, this year, Jerry, you don't have to pay the bill. So we, we took That's care right. of that. Um, we did have a little incident last night. Um, it was, there was a lot of in the boroughs, some of the sewer system, we didn't realize that the, the people were coming out the line of sanitary sewers. We got some calls over on Ridge and, and North and First, that corner over there for some odor, aroma in their eyes. It smelled like a xylene or, or something. Ended up, it was a, it smelled like a bondo for a car, working on cars. Ends up, I called Jerry at like quarter to 11 last night and he told me they were lying in the stores and that this would, would dissipate. So if anybody out there had a problem last night and they smelled something like that over in that corner, the, from north over to Ridge and Selden in that area, that's what it was. They were lying in the uh, sores up on, uh, up on, I believe Upper Ridge, up in the wooded area. Um, if Matt wants to expand on that or not, but uh, I guess it's, we haven't had any more calls, so I guess it's all all dissipated away. So other than that, everything's going good. Okay, I need a motion to accept the fire chief's report. Make a motion. <clears throat> so second by motion by Ms. Lealba's second. I'll second it. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Motion passed. All right. Uh, is Jamie on here for yes. PMS? Okay. Yep. Good, right Jamie. Me? Yes, sir. Good evening. Hope everybody is well. Thank you. Uh, I hope you are too. Doing the best we can, right? Right. Uh, for the month of October, we did 30 calls in Verona, 14 ALS responses, six. BOS responses, three patient refusals, two cancellations, three false calls, one lift assist, one deceased. Also to note, Asian Harmer is now open. It opened uh, October 6th, uh, it's open 24 seven and can handle pretty much 
anything with the exception of heart attack, strokes, or trauma, in which case they would notify us and we would come and move that patient to a bigger hospital. That's it. Okay, thank you. I need a motion to accept the EMS report. I'll make a motion. So, motion by Mr. Suchovitz. Need a second. Second by Mr. Forback. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Motion passed. I'd like to also thank Jerry and Laura Valley. They they were over there last night for a while with us and uh, we, we released them. They were they found out they weren't needed. So thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Ray. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay. Jamie, thank you for everything you do for the borough. Appreciate it. I meant no thanks, thank Jamie. You. Sorry about that. Oh, you're fine. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we have the budget to go over real quick. I'm going to try not to make this a big, long ordeal, but um, I'm going to go through this. I actually did a little presentation so that you're not just staring at me during this whole thing. Uh, can you see the presentation? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. How about now? Just, no, yeah, we yep. can't. You can? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I'll just go through this. Um, so I went through, we did the budget uh, as it stands. Uh, I'll just go through it slide by slide. We'll summarize at the end. So council, I sent this all out to you last week. Um, or actually, no, I sent it to you yesterday. Sorry. Uh, we're going to go through, basically, I'm not going to go line by line by line. We're going to go through um, each individual, uh, basically the highlight items, the things that changed, um, the things that, uh, the more standout items. So the first thing is we're going to start with the revenue. Um, the real estate tax for the current year, the current assessed value as of, more, uh, as of this month uh, $98,265,846 uh, with our current millage. The total tax bill would be a little over 766,000. We typically collect about 95% in the current year. The rest goes to prior year and then delinquent. So we budget for the current year real estate tax at $728,150, which is a slightly above last year the assessed value is continuing to go up as it has in the past uh, several years. So uh, if you go down the budget list, account number 310-100 is real estate transfer tax. So every time a property sells, 2% of it, uh, they pay 2% of closing, we get a piece of that. Um, I didn't budget, you can see in 2020, we had an increase of that. I believe we were about 32,000 annualized. Uh, I'm still budgeting 28. The reason being is, is that in 2020, Casabella Apartments on South Avenue sold. Uh, we got a significant amount. It was over a million dollar uh, sale. So we got a pretty substantial amount in transfer tax. Uh, below that, account number 321-500 is regulated rental fees. Uh, we, Casabella Apartments, the prior owner, was several, several years back uh, on re regulated rental. He had pretty much never paid it. Uh, so during during the sale process, Craig uh, litigated for us and we got a payout uh, to cover the back regulated rental, which is why our regulated rental fees are higher for 2020. I don't anticipate it being that high for 2021. So that's the reason why we did not increase that revenue line. Uh, to go back down, uh, this one's gonna be pretty substantial. So state grants, and I actually made a mistake, and I don't know what I was thinking, and Mike, uh, Mr. Florbeck corrected me. Um, the 904 grant is actually a state grant. It is not a county grant. So this is all state grants, 350-013. Uh, so the grants that we're looking at this year, and this is going to be, the, these amounts are net the, um, the local match. So first re reconstruction, the total estimated project cost is about $325,000. We have a 30% match, so the grant portion of it would be 227500 
Cribs Field, 171,488, which is 85% of the estimated project costs. Uh, storm sewer, uh, CCTV and condition ratings, $125,555. CDBG 47, we're gonna do a Wildwood and culvert repair. The grant portion of that would be $24,700. We'll go through the, um, uh, the grant matches later on in the presentation when we get down to major expenditures. Uh, but that's the grant portion, the revenue portion of it. The 904 grant came in at about $3,100 this year. Um, I budgeted 3,000. Uh, I think that it's a, a safe conservative bet. We've had some changes. We're gonna have some issues with the, we're dealing with some issues with the, the paper company and like that. So um, I didn't wanna get too crazy and uh, I was trying to be a little bit conservative on that budget line item. Uh, sewer rental fees is another thing that we're still working on finalizing. Alcasan is going, is continuing to raise rates. They're going to raise rates again. Um, we have to then turn and raise our rental, our sewer fees um, through Oakmont Water. I'm working with Matt and Oakmont Water to finalize what the new rates are going to be. And in December, when we pass the ordinance for taxes, we will also have to pass a resolution to increase the new sewer rates. So the number that's on the budget is the carryover from last year it is going to increase but we don't we're not going to make a, an additional profit we're basically just going to increase the amount uh to pass through the additional fee that alcasan is charging the borough uh, 380-000 is a miscellaneous revenue it's kind of a bucket that we put any strange one-off revenue sources that we end up with uh, typically we put about four thousand bucks in there it's very immaterial um, this year, I added an additional 60000 uh, in prior meetings. We've been discussing purchasing a new uh, truck for the Public Works Department and replacing two of the trucks that we currently have, one being the Peterbilt that we re requires a CDL uh, that doesn't get a lot of use, and the F550, which we are looking to get rid of because we put a motor in it two years ago. The warranty on the motor was two years, so... Um, we're considering getting rid of that. We're anticipating revenue of $60,000. Uh, I think that's conservative. I think it could be more, but for the budget, I'm expecting a $60,000 income uh, for the sale of those two trucks. Um, I'll discuss the, uh, the expense of the new truck later on in this presentation. Uh, 392030 is transfers from capital reserve. So over the last few years, there has been extra money that we've been able to kind of bank. Now, um, it's been a little bit trying, especially through uh, 2020 and 2019 with the Second Street collapse. We had to put all that new sewer line in. Uh, there have been some pretty substantial uh, expenditures that have come up. However, we have been able to be pretty conservative and, and keep some money because we knew that we had some, some sizable grant matches coming up. So I'm putting in the budget moving $92,000 from our capital reserve account, which is in a Pligit account, uh, to cover uh, mo most of the grant match for the first street, uh, first street reconstruction. So that's in there. Um, we have been, I will tell you that we have been very conservative in the last few years we've accumulated this money this budget is balanced because we've been able to do that so uh, I just want council to remember that you know sometimes we have to say no to things so that we can keep things in order this budget was able to be balanced without a tax increase but mainly because we were conservative over the last few years so I just want to keep that in mind because a lot of times this time of year it's really easy to uh, want to spend 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 and just because I was able to balance this year's budget, if you've got large projects coming up, we have to be cognizant of uh, how much we pull from capital reserves. Um, so going into expenditures, sorry. Um, I just kind of going through some of the highlights, some of the uh, wish list items that some of the departments have asked for. Um, 407272 is police hardware technology. Uh, the chief has requested that we get a new computer, some new computer equipment, uh, the, the computer systems that Annette is using and, and some of the other police are very outdated. So uh, it's not a lot of money, but that's in there. 
Uh, in addition to that, I also added an additional $8,000 to 409373 to do some upgrades in the police department, add an additional workstation since we're going to have some additional uh, police officers, uh, event system for the evidence locker, and some other repairs throughout the, uh, the police department, police station uh, that the chief is requesting. Um, the mayor has requested that we budget for an additional full-time officer. That is on here as well, 410-112. Uh, I budgeted uh, for a new, uh, an additional full-time police officer. Uh, I will say it, in the last couple of years, we did try to do some full-time officers. Um, if that is not, if that, if we have a difficult time with that, I would preface that council consider if we can't, then I think that needs to be moved over because we at least need more part-time officers. There's a, definitely a need for additional officers. So um, whether it's full-time or part-time, in my opinion, I know the mayor would like full-time. Um, personally, I just think we need more, more people that are gonna be willing to put in the hours for the community. So uh, next line, 410-185 police training. Uh, this is an account we usually put a few thousand dollars in I'm proposing that we put $14,000 in this budget. I think considering the current climate, I think that we need to invest some money into the training for these new officers and existing officers. Um, any training that we can do, I would leave that up to the mayor and the chief and the police committee. Uh, but I think that it's important that the borough invest money in training our officers uh, so that we can avoid any issues uh, by making sure we're the best trained around. Uh, next, 410-750, police minor expenditures. Uh, in this line item, the chief requested uh, some new shotguns for the police cars. They have not been upgraded in several years. The mayor requested uh, one of the radar speed warning signs. That's also in here. And I also added $7,000 in here for body cameras for the police officers. Uh, so that's what's made up in that account. The next account, 410-760, is major expenditures, or no, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm working with the chief to make sure that it's enough and we may need to put more money into this account before we finalize the budget, but I have $6,000 in here to cover new security cameras throughout the community. Moving on, uh, Account 414-450, Mr. Forbeck requested that we put $10,000 in here to cover a potential grant match for a comprehensive plan. Uh, 430 is the uh, public works the, uh, section. So 430-115, I am requesting that we put in the budget a new part-time employee for public works to cover basically summer, May through September. Uh, this month, this summer, they got, um, there's just a lot for them and I think that they could use an, an additional hand. Uh, so I budgeted $7,500, which would be uh, enough to cover a part-time person uh, during that time period. Uh, 430750 is minor expenditures for public works. Um, in there, you're gonna find the LED lighting program that we did last, last year for Duquesne Light. Uh, they're doing it again. We're budgeting approximately $11,000 so that we can maximize that project. Uh, after talking to Matt, I think we could probably get almost the entire community done for the rest of that money, for that about, about that money. So that's a pretty promising thing. Uh, the landscaping project for 2021, uh, we're budgeting 13,000. The tree pruning bid, we're estimating around 15,000. We're waiting for the bids to come in. Matt has a meeting, I'm sure he's gonna go over when it's his turn. Uh, flowers for the hanging basket, we have $2,500 budgeted for the purchase of the flowers and $8,000 budgeted for watering the flowers. Uh, the public works vehicle that we discussed earlier, uh, 430720 is public works vehicle payments. Um, the idea would be that we would get rid of the two trucks that we have, we would replace it with one F550. Uh, dump that would be sufficient to cover the responsibilities of both of those trucks. Um, if court, for the budget purposes, I'm, a, I'm looking at it's probably going to be about $100,000. But 
we typically for street screw trucks because they're so expensive we we finance them we don't pay cash so it would be uh and i'm estimating four percent for 60 months the payment would be approximately twenty two thousand one hundred four dollars per year uh, okay. so major expenditures for public works this is where we put grant matches big pro projects paving projects and like that so um the Grant matches for 2021, first street reconstruction, we're estimating at about 97,500. Cribs Field Pavilion will be 30,262. The storm sewer condition ratings will be 18,845 and CDBG 47, that culvert repair would be 13,300. Uh, in addition to that, we're scheduled to do phase two of second street, which would be about $95,000. And the Center Avenue storm sewer extension would be approximately $60,000. Down into Parks and Rec, uh, I'm gonna go into this in two separate uh, slides because there's a lot. So 454117, I'm recommending that we hire an additional Public Works employee that is going to mainly focus on Public Works or on uh, the Parks and Rec. Um, they're still gonna report to AJ, he's still gonna be the foreman, However, I think that his, this new person's focus would be mainly managing uh, anything that goes on in the parks. And I think that it should go toward the parks and rec budget. Um, and then parks and rec submitted their report, their requests, everything that they've requested is in the budget. Um, this is what they report, they requested. Um, I'm going to probably make this public. So instead of going through all this, it's going to be pretty, it's going to be a lot. Uh, so I'll make this presentation public. I know council's talking about making this version of the budget public for public uh, consumption and review. So I'll make sure that this is part of it so that uh, there's a good understanding of what parks and rec uh, programs or uh, projects will be getting done next year. Uh, basically the conclusion of it as this budget stands we're at a surplus of about $1,700 which obviously uh, before we finalize this we would put that $1,700 somewhere and uh, we would try to get it down to a net zero uh, budget there's a few things that we're still working on finalizing uh, some insurance things that I'm working with um, mr. Ewing uh, the, the uh, sewer fees and things like that uh, the cameras but I feel pretty confident that we are going to have no problem balancing the budget this year. Uh, once again, with no property tax increases. Um, my plan is that we will, uh, I'm going to have council review this budget over the next several days, submit any questions that you have to the to the finance committee. The finance committee will be meeting with me prior to the workshop to make any adjustments that are necessary. Um, when I made this presentation, I know we kind of talked about it, prior previously um, but when I made this presentation my intention was that we would advertise after the workshop I think some council members have expressed interest in advertising and putting it out to the public now so that we can have more discussions at the workshop and finalize it for passing in December uh, so I think that that part of the schedule is going to be changed up a little bit based on what council does next but uh, so basically that's the budget in a summary sense. Um, there's, um, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, anything you guys want to add, I just need to know so that we can get it in there for and get the adjustments made prior to the workshop. Or not prior to the workshop, but so we can discuss it and make changes at the workshop. All right. That's it. That's all I have. I noticed one Thank thing, you, Jerry. Mr. Under uh, you, you had four ten one eighty five as uh, just one little thing I noticed, and it's only a glitch of the number. The four ten one eighty five is vacation pay buyback, but you okay. put formal yeah, training over four ten one eighty nine. So we have to change right. that. Yep. You, I mean, you know. Yeah, it's it's actually correct on the budget. I just put it wrong on my spreadsheet, right? So or on my PowerPoint. So I just yeah. wanted you to. I don't know if you real, you know. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? 
So the way that we're going to proceed then is um, present questions to you in the finance committee in the next few days via email. And this is also going to be put out to the public. Um, I'm probably just, just going to post it on the website and post it on Facebook. Okay. Uh, we'll also have a copy of it down at the borough building. If anybody wants to come down, I'm sure Marcia will make them a copy. Um, okay. And Craig will work on getting the advertisement up saying that it is uh, available for public consumption. Okay. So we need to pass a, make a motion to advertise the budget. Correct. I'd like to make that move. First of all, I'd like to thank Jerry for the hard work he put in. I think there's a lot of numbers that moved around and trying to get everything squared away. Um, I know there's probably going to be a little tweaks here and there, but uh, I know there's been a lot of work involved in this. So thank you for that, Jerry. Um, I'd like to make a motion at this time to advertise the, this proposed budget uh, for, for in the papers so we can move forward with this. I'll second that uh, motion. It's a motion on the floor by Mr. Satcevich to advertise this budget seconded by Dr. Carpenter. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Motion passed. Jerry, you can go ahead and advertise this and put it on the website and things so I'll that by the workshop we can get I'll some get the money. advertisement over and we can start the 10 days like, like on Monday, even okay. though we're probably going to put it on a Facebook earlier than that. But uh, basically what the, what the uh, borough code requires is that notice of the proposed budget is available for inspection, uh, shall be published by the borough secretary or manager. Uh, in, in a newspaper general a, a circulation, except in boroughs in which the estimate budget receipts are less than $50,000. Uh, so there you have it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kenna. Yep. Thank, thank you. you for all your hard thank work. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Thank Good you, job. Jerry. Thank you. Mayor. You're, you're muted, Dave. You're muted. There you go. My dog was barking. Um, throughout the time, we've seen, throughout communities, I should say, we've seen those uh, military flags hanging on poles. And yes. Patty Tumanel and myself, um, we've been working on this for about a year, and we've kind of got, you know, laxed on it, but we're kind of kicked it into gear. We found some new prices. And um, I've talked to some other communities. Um, it will be, we, we have 30 poles, uh, AJ counted the poles where we could hang the flags on throughout the, um, the business district. And it'll be a first come first serve um, choice. Uh, they will be double sided, uh, military, um, men, women, you know, starting, you know, uh, but World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam and so on, and uh, they'll be double-sided. And if uh, anybody's interested, and especially if you have, like, like my father and my uncle, they're both uh, uh, World War II Navy veterans, and they have a picture together, so that would save families money, let alone free up another pole. You know, two pictures on um, one banner and one pole. Uh, the cost is gonna be $125. And that is very reasonable because other places are uh, uh, charging a lot more and it'll be $25 a year if you would like to renew it to put on the poll. If not, you would get that banner to keep uh, personally if you do not renew it. Um, almost every community has a waiting list. Um, it uh, fills up very fast. And... Um, um, Ray Rogers, uh, Rogers and Deturk, uh, they gave us a heck of a price on it. And that will also include um, the art set up for each and every one of them. And uh, the money that's left will be, you know, used for cleaning the flags when we take them down. They'll probably go up three times a year. Um, you know, they would, they'll be taken down over the winter because of the uh, weather. But like Memorial Day, Veterans Day, uh, Flag Day. Um, did I say Memorial Day? Yeah, I did. Um, they would be put up, you know, for probably a month or so. 
Uh, it'd be a great Christmas gift. So if anybody's interested, please contact myself or Patty Tuminella and uh, we'll get you on a list and uh, more information will uh, come as we put it together. Ray's gonna put up, uh, or he's going to do some artwork and um, hopefully it'll be done for the next meeting that I can show everybody uh, at the workshop. And hey, I would make a great Christmas gift. Yes. Being that there's only 30 or 60 slots, should we come up with one central way for them to apply? so that there's no confusion of what time this email came in because they sent it to Patty or sent it to you or yeah, I'm just, uh, I think I you're going to have more than 60. I know how popular also, it don't was you have here. a back boulevard or does somebody wanted to be on a, one of the back posts? I think that includes well, all well, of that, them. The 30 pole. Yeah. I, I, I thought you yeah, said 30 on the front boulevard. I'm sorry. No, all throughout the town, from the Eagles to Islers, from East Railroad. My bad. To Sorry about ARB. that. Uh, you're absolutely right, Terry. Um, I would prefer um, the Chambers is going to Chamber of Commerce is going to kind of take this over, and I'm going to talk to them actually about you know the money that's left. Maybe we could split it up with the Garden Club. I'm going to talk to the board on that. Um, but if we could have uh, um, the information sent to the Borough Building because the Ewings. Uh, the, you know, they, they uh, take all the mail from the chambers. They're not there every day because of the COVID. Um, they're short staffed. Um, but if we could uh, have the, them uh, call into the borough building and Marsha just take a phone number, Don, Patty, and I can get back to them and, um, you know, explain this to them. All right. Well, there. I'll get together with That's you important. and Patty. I'll get together with you and Patty and we'll come up with a nice, clean way to do it and make sure. Because I, I know yes. you're going to get more than 60 people to be involved in this. And you're going to have people calling yes, saying, uh, I called before and you don't want yeah. that. Right. Right. I'm well, confused. They, Why do you keep be... saying 60, Jerry? Well, aren't they double sided? You said they're, they're double sided. Double sided for the same, the same person. It's for the okay, same so person. It's the same picture. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. It's okay. the same picture on both sides. <clears throat> so then it's yeah, even more than more yeah, like 30. Only 30. Only 30. Yeah. Right. Right. And we'll see how it goes and we'll figure out where we can put them. I, I've actually seen them many communities on telephone poles, you know, with bands on them. But I mean, we'll go from there. We'll um, you put two different people uh, on, once, on one pole. Mm -hmm. um, the poles that we have, they only have the hanger for one. You know, the, can't hang the them over the boulevard because of you know, uh, PennDOT regulations. Gotcha. Right, right. And the other thing too is they have to, it's only going to be open to run a residence only. Um, even if you were in the war, were born and raised in Verona, fought in the war, then moved off because a lot of people do, you know, they got, came home from the war, got married. That's acceptable, but we're not um, going to um, accept any outsiders from Penn Hills or whatever that, hey, can I be on that? I live in the 15147 zip code. No, it's just going to be for Verona residents that lived in the community. Um, that's the way the other communities all do that. So it's kind of, we're gonna kind of screen them also, you know, make sure that they were here back then and you know, they were, you know, raised here, born here and what have you. And then, you know, apparently they got married and just moved to another community. So um, there'll be more information to come at the workshop and uh, that's all I have at this time. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I have a couple things. One is I had a telephone call from Shirley Davis today. Uh, the, they're going to get some uh, food from one of the food banks, but they need some help. And I'm asking the public as well as any members of council that are available on Friday at 1230 to meet at the church to help unload the truck with the food for the food bank for Verona. Uh, and I told her I would uh, announce that tonight. and. Uh, if anybody can be there, please show up and help. Um, the other thing is, uh, there's been a lot of issues with uh, public comments coming up and the last minute, and Marsha's changing the agenda two, three, four times, and then it's not the right agenda. So starting January 1st, first of the year, all <laughs> registered persons should be turned in and they should 
apply by the Friday before the council meeting and let Marcia know because then she gets the agenda out on Monday and she doesn't have to keep printing that two, three, four times for people calling in. So if they don't, if you don't have a uh, comment by in, by Friday at four o'clock, you're not going to be able to uh, have a public comment at that time. Uh, and we are going to limit you to three minutes, okay? Because some people just have a tendency to ramble on, but you will be limited to three minutes. Okay, that's all I have at this time. Mr. Pitch. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as Ray said earlier, uh, we did complete some sanitary lining uh, in the woods above uh, Ridge Street there. Uh, we did send out some notices to the immediate residents. Some of the complaints we received were pretty far down the road. And I, I do apologize to anyone that, that did get that smell. All the, all the work is done, so the smell is going away. Uh, so th that is not going to be an issue moving forward. Uh, the first street reconstruction, uh, we were just waiting for the one contractor to do some lining um, under the one CDBG project, and then we'll be ready to move forward with that one. Uh, the, the fourth street demos for the CDBG, I was in talks with Mr. Benecki. Those are still occurring. Uh, it looks as if they'll probably be going out the bid here in the next few weeks, uh, and then probably will be uh, torn down in early 2021. As far as the pavilion project at Cribs Field, I was talking to the contractor. Uh, he looks to be moving in and beginning demo in about two weeks. We're working with Duquesne Light to disconnect the power. And I have also been working with the um, camera contractor to make any dis disconnections they have to, and then possibly reconnect in the future. Um, the PA small water and sewer for the CCTV condition ratings of the storm sewer, that's moving forward. Uh, we will probably bid that here in December and then have the work in early 2021. Uh, as Jerry said, we had initially applied for the Center Avenue Storm Sewer to be a CDD, CDBG project. Uh, unfortunately, the county did not qualify under the income eligibility. So we did budget for that just to do it in-house next year. Uh, so we looked to probably do that in spring, early summer of next year. That way that is completed. Uh, with that, uh, I, something that was mentioned earlier was the T-drains at Cribs Field. Those kind of tie in because they would drain to this extension. Uh, with Pampina being there doing the pavilion construction, we're going to request a quote from him to install the T-drain. He'll have all equipment necessarily already on site. Uh, so as long as that quote comes in reasonable, we'll move forward and have that installed at the same time. And then as far as the CDBG 47 applications go, um, as Jerry said, we have the Wildwood culvert repair. Um, the Center Avenue storm sewer extension, unfortunately, was disqualified by the county. And then we still have the possibility of the alley reconstructions. Um, more than likely, the Wildwood culvert will, will happen for sure. Uh, and then the alley reconstructions will be up to the county. One, a couple other things that weren't on my agenda. Um, I did hear back from PennDOT. They have approved the timing change for the pedestrian signal at center in ARB. Uh, I will coordinate with the chief and with the traffic signal contractor to get that adjusted and to install the additional sign that warns motorists to yield to pedestrians. So that should be, do, be done shortly here. And then as Jerry said, the LED program through D, Duquesne Light, uh, they are starting to accept applications in December uh, they are not due until June, so we'll look at the rest of town. Um, and I did talk with them this week. Uh, one of their stipulations is they like to have 10 consecutive lights. As long as the lights are close to each other, uh, they will accept them. So they just don't want to install one light on Ridge Avenue and then move all the way down to East Railroad to install one. So I, I think we have enough remaining lights close to each other. We can group them together and get most of the town converted to LED lights. And that's all I have unless there's some questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pitch. Mr. Alexander. 
Thank you, Mr. President. A uh, number of things to talk about tonight. We've, uh, I believe Nancy's going to be bringing up the ordinances in her committee, but uh, or her, her report. We, we have a number of ordinances to uh, advertise, and we've been holding off doing that so that we could advertise them all together to save on the publication costs, especially if we're moving to the, the Post-Gazette. Um, one of those ordinances is the uh, animal regulation ordinance, which we spent some considerable time on to get it right. And uh, Dave Matten, Dave Matten, in addition to the ordinance committee, put a lot of time in on that as well. And I just wanted to thank him for that uh, because he did offer tremendous input. Um, there's also a resolution, Mike, I don't know if you wanna bring that up in your report or if you want me to read the heading now, I can do it either way. You can go ahead and do it now if you want to. Okay, so yeah. uh, Mike's gonna talk about this VOP, VOPP resolution, but I will read the heading and, and we can take a vote on it. Give me one I'm second. Sure. Share it. Okay, it's a resolution of the Borough of Verona, County of Allegheny, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, authorizing the submittal of joint active Allegheny grant program application to the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County for engineering and specifications for segments 1A and 1B of the VOPP trail, and that's Verona, Oakmont. Plum and Penn Hills. Uh, so a motion would be in order to pass that and then Mike can explain what that's all about. Okay, I need a uh, motion. There's a motion to uh, pass the VOPP resolution. I need uh, somebody to make that motion. I'll make that motion. Motion. I'll okay, second. Dr. Carpenter made it. Mr. Forbeck seconded it. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No, no. Well, it's not a motion. It's a resolution. I'm sorry. Resolution passed. Uh, as always, we meet on the fourth Monday of the month uh, to discuss these ordinances and uh, code enforcement matters. We did that again this past month. Uh, other than that, Mr. President, I'll, I'll chime back in when Nancy brings up her ordinances. Okay, thank you, Mr. Alexander. Thank you. Mr. Matlin. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I don't have any agenda items at this time. I did have a quick question I forgot about for Matt and or Jerry. Um, do we have any update for uh, painting those test, test lines on around North Avenue? I know we spoke about it a couple weeks ago. The paint came in. Uh, AJ and the guys just have to get up there and do it. Uh, we ordered the paint. It came in, I think, the end of last week or something like that. So they just got to get up there and try the different stuff. So okay, yeah, we're on it. Thanks. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Matlin. Dr. Carpenter. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have one quick question before I start into my agenda items for um, Craig. Um, we had talked about in the ordinance meeting about the building permit resolution fees. Is, do we have that or is that for the next time? I, I never received that update from Mark, so. Okay. I'll, uh, as soon as I get the numbers that he wants me to include into the right. resolution, we can, we can yes. have that even for the workshop meeting if you wanna do it. Basically, uh, we, we updated the fee resolution with demolition fees and something else at last month's meeting and Mark now has found some additional things he want, wants to include into that uh, fee resolution. So yeah. he's gonna send that over to me and we're gonna update that a little bit more. Yeah, the resolution from last time was for um, demo fees and dumpster fees. That's right. And this one is for all the other types of building permit fees, commercial, industrial, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Mark and Keith have reworked it so that uh, they, they're they more commensurate with modern times, basically. At, at this point, you might even want to just make that your 2021 fee schedule. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, as uh, 
Craig was talking about, we have four ordinances to um, make motions on for advertising. And uh, Craig, if you want to, you have them there. If you want to start which, with ever, whichever one you want to of the four. Sure. So I have uh, an ordinance of the Borough of Verona, County of Allegheny, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, identifying the responsibilities of persons owning and or keeping animals, prohibiting certain activities concerning animals, prohibiting unauthorized feeding, providing for enforcement and penalties and, and expressly repealing ordinance five of 20, uh, 2001 and ordinance three of 2008. That's the animal ordinance. So I'm going to make a motion that we advertise this uh, animal ordinance. I think there's a motion on the floor by Dr. Carpenter to advertise the animal ordinance. I need a second. Doctor. Second by Mr. Suchovich. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any noes? No noes. Motion passed. So the next is an ordinance amending and supplementing ordinance number eight of 1987 as codified in the codified ordinances of the borough of Rona at section 244-10 which provides for the placement of stop signs at intersections in the borough of Rona. Okay so um, I would like to make a motion that we advertise uh, this ordinance about the stops the additional stop signs um, in the borough of Rona. There's a motion on the floor by Dr. Carpenter to uh, advertise for the stop signs in Verona. Uh, I need a second. I'll second. Second by Mr. Suchovich. Are there any questions? Yes, I have a couple questions. There's a couple stop signs here that I don't know if we really, really need. And, and I just want to bring it up before we vote on it. Um, the one would be Second Street going up North Avenue. Uh, there, that's kind of like a, that's kind of a crazy one to me. The next one would be High Street at Selden. The next one would be High Street at Union. And the last one would be Walnut at Athletic. Um, it just seems like the High Street ones, especially <coughs> Don Union, where, where High Street comes over, or coming down north you make the right on i don't know if we need them there i mean if everybody's okay with that i just i just want to mention it what's everybody's thoughts so my my thoughts are that at, at some point uh there was an engineering review done that said that those signs were warranted uh, matt you can correct me if i'm wrong but I, I think that there would have to be another review that to, to determine that they're not warranted oh, was there an engineering what did they do something come in and look at this or was this just us wanting to do these? Uh, Matt, I worked, Matt and I both looked at this, Ray. But yeah, he, yeah, go yeah, ahead. So I worked with Dave on those. Uh, and to answer your question, Ray, the, the ones that you're talking about, uh, the north and second, uh, that stop sign is on second. Uh, currently, that is a three way intersection that's not, uh, no signs at all. Oh, so they're coming over second where they could make the left down north or down to the back alley. Correct. So okay. you're you're stopping to turn on north. the north. I uh, thought it was coming up north, turning right on the second. And then as far as the the high in Selden, that intersection there, uh, the the people that are on, I hear it referred to as Front Street or Selden. Mm -hmm. When you when you hit that stop sign, you almost have to turn around backwards to see traffic coming down High Street. Uh, and High Street right now is unimpeded. Uh, so making that a three-way signalized uh, or signed intersection, uh, everyone is aware that all three directions are stopping then. There's no one that just has the right-of-way there. Uh, and then, I'm sorry, what, what was the third one that you said? I said high in Union, where high comes over to Union on the other side. Oh, uh, that there, uh, that one's just more of a formality. Uh, you're pretty much stopping anyways to make that right-hand turn yeah. and because of the grades of the roads. And then um, Walnut and Athletic, um, as you're coming up to Athletic, it, it's more or less common sense that you would stop at Athletic anyways to make a right or a left-hand turn, uh, but there's no sign there to formally make you stop. So it's more of a safety factor there. Okay. Question answered. Thank you very much, guys. 
Any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 No. Any no's? No no's. Motion passed to advertise. So the next ordinance uh, for advertisement is an ordinance relating to alarm systems providing for the issuance of permits for the installation of such systems, the revoc for the revocation of said permits requiring the registration of owners of said alarm systems with the borough for the installation of said alarm systems and providing for fines and, administ and administration of the ordinance. And basically what that is, is it uh, penalizes false alarms. Great, thank you. Um, so I'd like to make uh, a motion to advertise uh, this ordinance to deal with false alarms. Motion on the floor by Dr. Carpenter to advertise for false alarms. Are, I, I need a second. Okay. I'll, I'll second that. Are, are there any questions? Dan, I have one question. Sorry to be the pain in the neck tonight. Uh, I. I'm all for this ordinance, first of all. I think it's a great thing being a fire chief and you know, running for the police and EMS. But if you look at page three, it has under there, and I don't know if I'm reading this wrong, under section five, subsection A, one false alarm. Then we're gonna start fining them after one false alarm. Um, believe me, I don't wanna run more false alarms than we have to on a fire end. And I'm sure the chief and the mayor don't want their police officers running more. But I'm wondering if we want to look at that one false alarm a little differently and maybe make that two or three, you know, because things happen. And, and uh, you know, sometimes I've noticed throughout the years things happen with, with the alarm systems or, you know, it's burnt food or, or whatever. That's the only problem I have with this, this ordinance. Well, I mean, I, I, you can you can still uh, give approval to advertise with the with the change to that provision. Do you want to make it three or? What's I mean, you guys put the time and effort into it. I'm not trying to overstep the ordinance committees, and I think they did a great job. They they did what we asked, but I just think one false alarm, and if you don't find that person after one false alarm, and you miss somebody else, you know, I just. I, I don't know what's Craig off the top of your head. Do you know what other townships and boroughs do? Well, I mean, I, this is an ordinance that I've taken from a community that I, I did it for years ago and, and they actually wanted it more strict. That's why uh -huh. it's, it's written in there that way. And I, I would, I would tend to agree with you, Ray, that it, you probably should get one free get out of jail free card uh, at least. So I would uh, like to change this that to two false alarms. Okay. So go two, okay. three, four. So, so this one, is one is free i believe and then you start, don't pay a fine until the second false alarm that's correct i had a confusion when i first read it as well yeah that's correct now after nancy points that up yeah you get right. the, after your one false alarm if you have another one that's when you get fined right yeah not till the okay. second one okay i'm good with that then i miss i misread it also, yeah, I, I, mis that. I understand because I kind of misread it the first time also. I think it's a great thing and, and it, it'll it'll help the police fire an EMS for running, you know, when nobody cares and doesn't want to. Oh, I, I, they can run down here. Who cares about, you know, I think it's a good thing. You answered my question. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Are there any other questions? No, no other questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Motion passed. Oh, the final ordinance for advertisement, and I don't have the full heading in front of me, but we've gone over it before uh, at various meetings. I, I the, have it if you want me to read it. Is the short term rental ordinance. If you want to, you can. Uh, An or okay. An ordinance of the Borough of Verona, County of Allegheny, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, providing for and regulating the use of short term rentals, establishing rules and standards pertaining to such uses providing defined terms and connection therewith and providing penalties for any violations. So a motion would be in order to advertise yeah. that ordinance right. as so, well. Yes, yeah. so I will um, make a motion uh, to advertise the short-term rental ordinance. I'll oh, second. Motion on the floor by Dr. Carpenter to advertise the short-term rental ordinance. 
second by Mr. Sachevich. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Mo motion to advertise is passed. Well, I uh, appreciate that, everybody. That short-term rental ordinance has been waiting a long time. And then the other two just came along. So we are going to save the borough a bit of money by advertising all four of them at the same time. And thanks again to everybody that, that offered their input on these. Yes, thank you very much. Um, thank so, you, Ordinance Committee. That was a good job. Uh, you're welcome. Um, so uh, the other thing I have on my uh, under my agenda items is that um, the positions that are vacant on the Planning Commission have been advertised for a while on uh, Facebook, Jerry. I, I think you did that, so thank you. Um, and we we have two positions, and we have two uh, people who are interested. Um, I'd like to relay uh, the information from their letters one at a time, and then I'll make the motion uh, for uh, to accept them onto the Planning Commission. The first one is from Daniel Showalter, to whom it may concern I'm interested in filling a vacancy on the Verona Planning Commission. As a proud Verona resident for nearly six years, it's been a privilege to become involved in my community by helping to revitalize the Neighborhood Watch Program and assisting with community events such as the Verona Farmers Market and Movies in the Park. I would like to grow my volunteer efforts in the borough and I believe I have the time, energy, and ideas to contribute to the Planning Commission. So I'd like to make a motion for Dan Showalter to be a member of the Planning Commission and the terms we will figure out uh, at a later time. Second, Nancy. Thank you. All right, there was a motion to appoint Dan Showalter to the Planning Commission by Dr. Carpenter, seconded by, by Ms. Provenza. Are there any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 No. Okay. It passes. Thank you. So the second, the second person uh, who's interested in a position is uh, William Red Craig or Bill Craig. Red to some people. Anyway, he writes, I'm uh, possibly interested in joining the Planning Commission. 30 plus year resident of the borough and was previously on the RAA board. He works at the 10th Street uh, Elementary School. So um, I'd like to make a motion for uh, Bill Craig to be a member of the Planning Commission. Second, Nancy. Thank motion you. by Dr. Carpenter for the, uh, Mr. Craig for the uh, Planning Commission, second by Mr. Provenza. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Motion passed. Um, so <laughs> under miscellaneous, I just have a quick question. I guess this might be for Jerry. Um, as we're nearing the winter season, are we looking at um, finishing off the salt in our dilapidated salt garage so that we can uh, take care of that? this winter? Sorry. Yeah, I believe that's the intention. So I'll be working with AJ um, for this winter. Um, we're going to once again piggyback off of Oakmont's shed. Uh, we'll, we'll purchase our share of the salt and use their shed for storage. And then I believe we're working out an alternative plan for uh, hopefully next winter. Uh, but that's still in the works. But but the first salt that we're going to use up is the salt that's here in Verona, correct. correct? Correct. So we can empty that. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Forback. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the police committee uh, interviewed uh, a candidate for a part-time police officer, Zachary Janako from uh, Monroeville. Um, we unanimously um, approved of the him along with conference with the mayor. Uh, he passed all uh, background checks. So at this point, I would like to make a recommendation that we hire Zachary Janako um, Monrovo as a part-time police officer for the borough of Verona. There's a motion on the floor to hire Zachary Janaka 
I need a second. I'll, I'll second, second that. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Motion passed. Great. The part time police officers. That's fantastic. Thank you. Keep them coming. Um, the second issue uh, in. Uh, and Mr. Alexander had brought that up. First of all, thank you for passing the resolution. Um, they, uh, Mr. Martin and I, uh, Matlin and I have been um, on the BOP uh, trail uh, team for uh, a number of years now. We passed the feasibility study. This is actually for an act of $50,000 grant that has no match from, for all the communities. Rona is gonna still be administering it, um, but it will, it, is, um, it will be for the engineering study uh, um, and design for the first part that connects Rona and Oakmont and up into, into through Penn Hills. So this is a, uh, a, a good achievement that we're, we're looking forward to. We're looking at submitting this application um, probably mid-November, I think, right, Dave? Dave sent the copy of the app, uh, draft application to everybody. Plum uh, approved their, their resolution last night, so we now have two of the four communities. We expect the other communities to approve this and to be able to get this grant, so thank you very much. Um, under miscellaneous, uh, was, um, uh, we did have our, our meeting under the our comp, plan, our comp plan committee. Uh, we had uh, environmental planning and design, gave a great presentation of what it takes, what you need to have in a, in a comp plan. We plan to have another um, consultant in the, in the, our, for our next meeting to give uh, further feedback. And we're moving forward on that. And we're going to divide into looking for other grants and so forth to pay for this. So thank you. And that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Pre oh, Mr. President, um, I'm sorry. I just want to let you know I can do it now or at the end. I forgot one thing. Let's get it done. I uh, just wanted to say that um, there, there is a potential opening if someone is really interested on being uh, on the Shade Tree Commission. Uh, uh, Denise Jamelis is willing to serve if need be, but uh, I told her that I would uh, make an announcement in public for people to know that um, if they are really interested in working with the Shade Tree Commission, that she would be willing to let go of her, um, of, of her spot. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Satrovich. Um, I have really have nothing. We went over the budget earlier. Um, I really have nothing at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lealbo. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, memorials. This past summer, we've had several uh, different entities request memorials in the, you know, in the different parks. Um, the Parks and Rec Board Committee have been working on that. Laura Jacko and Jim Ashbaugh really put together uh, some really great ideas where in the future um, you could uh, possibly memorialize a tree for one of your loved ones or a park bench or eventually have like a wall plaque, you know, one of the parks. Um, there'll be a price list and maintenance list. It's well written. There's just a little bit of critiquing to do. Uh, speak about that at their uh, December meeting and uh, probably for December then we can bring it to the borough for, for, for the, or the council for approval. Um, the next rec board meeting will be December 1st. It's the first Tuesday of the month. It is a Zoom meeting so you know you're welcome to get on. Uh, it'll be listed under uh, Parks and Rec and will be the link so you can on Facebook so you can uh, go on to the Zoom link from there and participate in that meeting or maybe a watcher um and really that's all i have okay thank you oh, one more thing i would like to yes. make say a thank you to everyone on borough council and um and uh craig and jerry for your help with the community dinner it was a great success it was nice teamwork done by all um everybody was very appreciative <laughs> Shirley Davis and her crew, you know, for their hard work that they put forth every month. I want to say thank you once again um, for everyone's effort. And, uh, uh, you know, there was money that was donated that evening that's going to the food bank as well. So um, thanks again. 
Well, Janet, thank you for all your efforts in putting it together. Yep, thank you, Janet. You're welcome. Okay, Provenza. Yes, sir, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, under newsletter, we're currently taking ads right now and um, articles for the winter issue, which will cover January, February, and March. And um, we'd really like to have all of our ads and all of our articles in. It has to be actually no later than Monday, November 30th. Uh, with the holidays coming up now and uh, our printer, uh, Rogers and Turk, they do take some time off. So if we can get these in early, that would be great. Uh, it will just speed things up where we can have it out a little bit earlier because of holiday. And uh, if uh, anybody would um, like to send an article, we can send it to our editor, which is Donald Wharf. And the uh, email address is Verona Newsroom at gmail.com. And I'll be glad to take any ads and I can be reached at 412-828-7726. Um, Farmer's Market is now uh, completely done for the year. And again, a big thank you to Stephanie Garibay. You did a great job, Stephanie, thank you. But we will have Shrams here this Thursday, the 12th, and again, next Thursday, the 19th. And uh, then they'll be finished for the year. And if anyone has any farmer's market vouchers, um, do use them because after uh, November 30th, they are no longer any good. So you want to get those vouchers and use them up if you still have them. Uh, Historical Society, all meetings are still canceled until further notice. And uh, if you uh, want to check if, to see if there's any information on the Historical Society, you would just go to veronahistory.org and sometimes there are uh, bits of information on there. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, I spoke with Kevin and uh, there will be no meeting this month. Uh, next month, the meeting is going to be Tuesday, December the 15th, and that will be a reorganization meeting. And uh, I will have more information or detail on that at our next meeting. Uh, community dinner, I... Uh, did talk to Shirley today and she said, please, whatever you do, don't forget to thank each and every person on council. She said, I can't tell you folks how much we appreciated you and for hosting the dinner. And yes, Janet, you were right. It was a uh, great team effort. We all worked there together. It was wonderful. And I would like to say a special thank you to Janet. You stepped up to the plate, Janet, and you took care of uh, our part with the uh, uh, borough council, you know, being part of it and being a host to it. And uh, it just turned out wonderful. And I think this ministry that Shirley Davis has is absolutely wonderful. When we bring meals to these people, you just can't imagine how happy they are and what a service we do to them. So this ministry that Shirley has, I'll tell you, it's wonderful. And it's just something that really needs to continue in this town. So Shirley and your girls, thank you so much. Um, lastly, uh, ALOM, I'll just give the ALOM now. Is that okay? Okay, Pat? that's fine. Okay. Um, the, I got notification from Allegheny County, uh, Boroughs Association, and they're going to have a general membership meeting and a holiday gathering. And, um, our council is invited to it and it's going to be on Thursday, December the 3rd. And uh, they've changed locations this year. It's going to be at the South Hills Country Club. And um, the reason for this affair is it's the swearing in of new officers, uh, policy updates, and uh, networking. And it is a wonderful uh, function. I've been to them before, and so have uh, some of our council people. Very, very nice. And it's nice to be represented there. And they're asking anyone that, uh, a tent if they would please bring a toy uh, and or a gift of money uh, to donate to the, it's called the uh, Presence from the Police. And this also is a wonderful, wonderful uh, service that the police are doing. This was started by a uh, officer and his name is David Nemick and he's from Aspenwall. And uh, he started this organization to help children that are less fortunate and don't get the uh, gifts maybe that other children get. And not only that, 
he wants children to know that law enforcement is in favor of children and they're here to help them, that they're not there to just correct them and be stern with them, but to help them. So um, this has just been a wonderful, wonderful thing. And um, they do ask that we all bring a small door prize, plus of course a gift or a monetary donation. So um, I would um, just share this with all of you and see if you can make it. And with that, I thank you very much, Mr. President. That is my report, sir. Thank you. Yes, uh, sir. I have one question of council. I should have asked this before. Uh, does anybody on council object that if we can't, depending on the work schedule of AJ and them, that we could use possibly uh, the work crew for maybe 20 minutes or so on Friday to help unload this uh, equip this food for uh, Shirley Davis? Let them do it. That'd be an awesome, awesome mm -hmm. suggestion. Yeah. What time is that happening? Do you know? 12.30. She said 12.30, quarter to one, but probably around 12.30. And Jerry, I know that's a lot to ask of the of the work crew, but um, if the, we could, just 20 minutes, that's it. If, if they don't mind, it. let them do it. Ask, ask them. If they mind, yeah, I I'll, understand. I'll ask AJ tomorrow. Okay. If they mind, I understand, but I would like to ask them anyway, okay? Okay. Yeah, no Thank problem. you. Um, anything from COG, Dave? Um, no, we, the last meeting we went over, um, some of the new CDBG grant applications, which Matt already went over for Verona. So there's nothing else to report. Okay. Nothing from the projects or anything. Okay. Public comments. Uh, so we have three people so far. I think, uh, I think this is Susie Davis. Hi guys, this is for Matt. You said about they came up on, they sent letters out to the residents on Ridge Avenue about the sore work. They did not. Nothing so, was sent out to us. Can you say your name and the, your address, please? Sorry, Susie Davis, 537 Ridge Avenue. I said, we did not get no notification. We knew only because my husband had been talking to the workers that something was coming on and that we were not to use the washer XX water because they were connecting the sore lines. But nobody on this street got anything. So I don't know who informed you, but we did not get no notification. Okay, thank you. Have Matt look into that. All right, next will be Dan Showalter. <clears throat> Uh, hold on. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. sir. Okay, uh, Dan Showalter, 440 North Avenue. Um, first off, I'd like to thank you guys for voting me onto the Planning Commission. I do look forward with uh, working with Mike Forback on the uh, comprehensive plan. Um, I, th I, I think we could do some real damage there. Um, <laughs> that, oh, pardon me? Oh, go ahead. Um, Second of all, um, I would like to thank everybody that volunteered up at the uh, fire hall for the election this past Tuesday. I myself was out front for about five and a half hours. Um, and I got to say, though, the touch screen went down and they kept rolling forward. Um, we had two people that came up that uh, stated they had the COVID. And I got to say, the guys inside did an amazing job. Um, so I just want to put many thanks out there to everybody that was working inside the fire hall on election day. Good job, and um, thank you. And that'll be all. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay. Next is uh, either Dawn or Rhoda Wharf. Wait a minute. Rhoda Wharf. There you go. Okay. Rhoda Wharf, 636 3rd Street, Verona. Um, I'm just questioning, uh, I sent, or Donald sent Dave Matlin some pictures of a third, the 800 block of 3rd Street. When they paid third, they paid the 600 block and the 700 block, but didn't pay the 800 block. And some of the residents were complaining, and so I was trying to 
connect with uh, Dave to see, can that be on the list for next year? I mean, it's not a long street, but it, it's really bad, the potholes. Uh, Rhoda, I had responded to Don this morning. Um, I told him I'm gonna get with Matt and Jerry on, on this, at least okay. um, looking at whether the streets crew can uh, do some temporary patching. I'd appreciate but, uh, it. Yeah, we're in the process of prioritizing okay. um, <laughs> paving. So yeah, we'll, we'll okay. definitely take it into consideration. Okay, wonderful. No, I'm sorry, I didn't see that email. I'm okay, um, how about the speeding um, on between 2nd and 4th streets? Um, it's really, it's really bad. I was hoping that maybe we could put some signs up or get the police up there or something, but it's uh, on South Avenue between 2nd and 4th Street. It's like, it's like a speedway. Uh, Dave? Recupero? You're muted, Dave. I'm sorry, my dog. Um, do you have any t particular times you notice it more? I mean, I do send the officers up there, yeah. but it's probably the wrong times. Well, my sister and I walk like twice a day, like I mean, afternoon and evening. And um, it's pretty much any time. I, I, I don't want to swear to a time because I'd be lying to you. It's just in right. nine out of 10 times, not to sound overly critical, but a lot of times they're like young drivers that, I mean, they don't even do a Hollywood stop. I mean, they just go straight through, you know? Um, yeah, right. if, we could, if we could put a stop or a, maybe like um, a speed sign, 50 miles per hour, maybe this would give us leverage if we do get, you know, the cops stopping one. Would that give a leverage? Well, I, I do have it in the, I, I do have it in the budget for another speed sign, electronic one okay. um, that I want to use throughout the time. Okay. Um, um, so, my, but I mean, I will uh, talk to the chief again on that. Okay, fantastic. Um, again, the garbage trucks on Wood Street, they have totally, totally damaged where my property is from the alley to Wood Street. I'm having a contractor come out and I'm doing a very big project that's going to cost some money. And I really do not appreciate that this garbage truck is coming literally physically on my hill. So when I do my landscaping and my new fence and my wall, I'm going to be very upset if it gets damaged by these trucks. So I'm telling you ahead of time my concern because I'm investing my money and I don't want it damaged. So I want some, I need, I really want something done about it. It doesn't happen once. It happens every week. And Mike Forbeck, you live right across the street. You can see the tire marks on my hillside. Matlin, Dave, you've come also and seen it. So are we gonna do something or what's the story? It will be reported to the garbage company. Oh, okay. I mean, have you called Marsha to tell her, have you, have you let Marsha know? Um, All the I actually the county sent, hauling are going through Marsha. I did, I sent um, pictures from my phone a while back. I mean, Dave, met, I, Dave even came up and looked and we took pictures. Yeah. Okay. I think the problem is, is we were trying to get photos or I, I even put a trail camera up on our fence and we were trying to get photos of, of the truck actually driving on her property. And the, the one time I put it up, we, I didn't, I didn't see them actually doing it that week. So. Well, I have the track marks. If anybody would take the time and come up and look because I have literally physically two huge tire marks from the truck. Yeah, I mean, I think we should report it to county hauling. The problem is, is that even the tire trucks, I mean, I, I'm pretty confident that, that that's what it's from, but, but proving it to county hauling might be tough without, without photo, photo evidence. I agree with you, Dave. And, and I was up there and looked at some of the curb damage as well as some of the other corners that you pointed out. And it, it's easy to assume that that's kind of the common truck that's in town, but there's also UPS and FedEx trucks that have dual axles. Uh, so without video or picture evidence, it, it's hard to lock it down on one person doing it for sure. Okay, three minutes is up folks. Let's move on. Okay, um, next will be uh, Vince Floda. 
Phil, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Vince Floda, 323 Penn Street, Verona. Um, the Lower Valley Athletic Foundation is collecting donations of new unwrapped toys and clothing to distribute to local families that have children in need of holiday gifts this year. I was wondering if I could put a donation box in the vestibule until starting tomorrow until about December 15th. I don't have a problem for the kids. Yeah, we're working with uh, Shirley Davis. She's going to get us a list like she does every year, and then we're going to uh, try to help as many families out as we can. Mark the box. Sure don't take the campaign signs. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure the box is marked what it's for. Yeah, I have signs on the box, and, and it's okay. all ready to go. Okay. Anybody uh, have objections to that? No. Okay. No, I think it's a good thing. Good idea. Thank you, Thank you very much. That's all. Thank you. All right. Now we have uh, Laura Jacko. Hey, all. How are you? Laura Jacko, 437 North Avenue. Um, not to be like too much of a troublemaker, I just wanted to follow up on some uh, questions that were brought up um, at the last council meeting, um, just because I think like there's a lot of people who uh, are really confused about the process for what's going on at uh, 443 North Avenue, um, where the new landlord is trying to turn it from a single family home into a multifamily home. Can anybody tell me if there's going to be a public hearing on this? Because it was my understanding that there's that there should be. Is that is that correct? I don't know, Craig. Do you know? Can't hear you. You're, Craig, muted. You're, muted. you're muted. Sorry about that, uh, guys, Laura. I haven't heard anything about uh, this house since last month's meeting uh, when I guess there was an issue with the dumpster and that was resolved. And I, I think that he was cited. But other than that, I, I haven't heard anything. Okay, well, I guess the concern here is, is that apparently their application to do this was sent on September 21st. So they have like a pending application before Verona Borough. And um, if Verona Borough is supposed to post zoning uh, hearings within 60 days of getting these sorts of applications, we're coming up on that really fast. So I don't really quite understand, you know, what the next step is, but I am aware that they have an application. It does, to Borough it does to do not that. need to go to a zoning hearing board. There's not going to be a zoning hearing board. Mark has addressed this several times. Once the application is approved, whether he approves it or not, if he approves it, he is going to reach out to everybody that was on that original email and let them know that he's approved it. And then your timeline to appeal his approval starts. He's going to let you know when, if and when he decides to approve any sort of zoning change. It's not a zoning change. I should, yeah whatever okay. the the adjustment he's going to let you know that he's not going to assure you nobody is doing anything without you guys being uh, aware of it he is yeah, going I mean, to reach just, out to everybody in that this, email list whenever if and when he decides that to approve the change to a to a duplex yeah i think there's just been a lot of confusion because some of the things that we are hearing from craig might be a little bit different from what we're hearing from you which might be a little bit different from what we're hearing from mark and what we're hearing from mark is different from time to time so it's good to check and also have it on the record so what i'm hearing from everybody is that there is not a zoning hearing meeting that is necessary for this application is that correct yeah, now my, my a duplex is a permitted use in every zone of verona borough whether it's R1, R2, R3, a duplex is considered a single, as, as far as zoning rules, a single family occupancy. So he does not need a zoning variance okay. in order to have a two family home there. Mark has to approve changing it to a two family home because there are requirements like fire barriers and other things that have to be done prior to allowing two families to be occupied to have occupancy in two separate occupancy permits for that property that's what mark has to do so once that work is done and mark approves that dual occupancy then you'll be notified and you can appeal the occupancy permit that was issued to make that a two-family home 
So it does not need a variance. R1, R2, R3, it doesn't matter. A duplex is a permitted use in every residential zone in Verona Borough. I understand that this is something that's coming from being a single family home to being a multifamily dwelling. So it's not just that, oh, this is something that can happen. I think the idea also and the concern is, is that, you know, can anybody just make any of their houses into these things Laura, without having he to just, have a zoning hearing? Laura, Jerry just explained that, that every house can become a duplex. So and every house can become a duplex. Yes. There are requirements. There are requirements. So I guess that brings me to my like next that. concern then, which is um, the concern was brought up that our zoning uh, code is has not been looked at in decades. And um, I haven't heard anybody talk about that at this. So I wanted to know if that is, since this concern has been brought up, um, that if that's something that's going to be looked at being updated then. Or are we all comfortable with any house being turned into multifamily dwellings just whenever? Yeah, um, at the last meeting, I think I mentioned that we're looking into some um, companies that do revisions of zoning ordinances. However, my understanding is that every type of zoning must be allowed at somewhere in every town. and. Craig, you might be able to explain okay. this better than I can. We're, so, we're going beyond um, the three minutes, folks. Well, uh, can we just no, finish? No. Fin can we finish this up, Pat, so that the question doesn't come up again next time? It's three minutes. Move on. I have not had three minutes of talking time. Actually, most of the time has been taken up by either council members, uh, the lawyer, or actually, the you've been on for five minutes, Laura. All right. Well, that, that, that that's the point about public comment. We we need to start allowing them to get all of their comments out before we respond and that way they can get their three minutes in and then whatever response time there is there is um, i've been saying that for a long time so thank you craig well, and those were pretty much my comments and i would like to since it wasn't brought up at the meeting like what the updates were because it sounds like there are updates and nancy maybe has some updates and i didn't hear those brought up during the meeting i would like to know what those updates are and i think maybe other people would too Craig, if you could just finish what I was starting there as uh, 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 the explanation about that. Okay, just very, very briefly, you're not allowed to have exclusionary zoning. You have to, you have to have somewhere for every legitimate use, even, you know, and that's why a lot of uses that people don't like are pushed into an industrial area, but they have to be somewhere. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we have one more, uh, Kat Hoge. You there? Yes. This is Kat Hoge, 443 North Avenue. Just to kind of piggyback on that ordinance, possible change of the zoning. I do agree and understand that every um, residential zone has to have, you know, certain things you can and cannot do. I think the main thing that might be changed on that ordinance is, um, you know, that the owner of the, or I'm sorry, the tenant of the duplex must also be the owner. So you see that in lots of other townships where, yes, you can turn a single family home into a multi-dwelling, but the owner of the house must live on the property, which goes back to what I said last month is, you know, all these problems with animals and rats and trash and weeds. It's 99% of the time, unfortunately, because you have landlords that are not present, that are investors that live in other you know, townships further away than 15 miles, like the ordinance says. Um, and then they will often hire management companies who basically just collect the rent. So I think maybe that ordinance could be updated in some way, shape or form on that end. And then it wouldn't, um, you know, seclude certain areas to only being single family versus multifamily. Thank you. That's it. Okay. I need a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make the motion, Pat. Motion made by Mr. Provenza. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Sachevich. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Thank you, everybody. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank Good you. Night, everybody. Good night.
Thanksgiving. Bye, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope everybody. you feel better, Dave. Thanksgiving. Hope you feel better, Dave. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you.